All right, so questions from 717 service. There's a bunch of them. I'm gonna to try to do four in this video and a couple in the next, and then we'll spread out the answers to some of the others in the coming weeks. The first question is this, is the law of Moses still binding upon Christians today? If not, why? Answer, the law of Moses is no longer binding on Christians today because Jesus himself fulfilled every aspect of the law and thus now put us under a new law, the law of love. Paul the Apostle in the book of Galatians says circumcision is no longer in play, feasts, festivals, new moon, Sabbaths, all of those things have been fulfilled, and that it is, a, it is a sad thing if Christians go back under some kind of legal obligation to try to keep them. Uh, again, it's not a problem if that person says, I'm going to go back and observe Passover as a celebration of Christ's fulfillment of it. But if they go back and say, we have to do this, uh, they are, uh, they're living under the Old Testament law. And we're told explicitly, Paul says, I myself am no longer under the law. Now here's Paul, a Pharisee, a Jew, a tribe of ben Benjamin, who is saying, I'm now no longer under the obligation of the law. If Paul's not under the obligation of the law, and if circumcision, the single greatest example of legal following for Old Testament Jewish people was circumcision for Jewish men, uh, and that's been fulfilled in Christ and now no longer an obligation. We know that dietary rules were no longer in play. We know that other aspects of ceremonial law went away. We're told in the book of Hebrews those things are passing away and no longer uh, an obligation to believers under the new covenant. So because of that, the Old Testament law was completely fulfilled in Christ and Jesus, Matthew 5, 17 and 18, this is the next question, can we interpret that? Matthew 5, 17 and 18, where Jesus says, not one jot or tittle will uh, pass from the law until all has been accomplished or fulfilled. Answer, Jesus accomplished every single aspect of the law. And so when the temple is destroyed in 70 AD, the writer of Hebrews says that which is obsolete is about to pass away. Many interpreters view that as the writer of Hebrews writes that knowing that the temple is about to be destroyed and to go away. The destruction of the temple in 70 AD by Titus is kind of a historical event to show all the law had been fulfilled and was no longer needed anymore and that Jesus had fulfilled it completely. So that, uh, and, and what the greatest example of this, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, where Jesus abolished in his body all of the ordinances uh, in his body on the cross. And when Jesus died, the, the veil of the temple is torn from top to bottom, top to bottom, meaning from God's perspective down, access to the Holy of Holies. And, and that moment of access to the Holy of Holies in the tearing of the temple veil, it shows all the laws and all the separation between us and God that's built into the temple worship. All of them have been completely fulfilled. The greatest of which would have been the Holy of Holies at Yom Kippur has been completely satisfied the moment Jesus died. And so Jesus completely fulfills it and in his resurrection then ushers in a new covenant life between us and God. And so Jesus fulfills it completely. Christians are no longer bound by the law of Moses, but instead are bound by the law of love, the love exhibited in Christ Jesus. Third question is, how can Torah still be observed if the Levitical priesthood has been halted? Answer, it shouldn't be observed anymore. It has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So if the reason the Levitical priesthood is no longer in play is because God fulfilled it completely in Christ and made it obsolete and then ultimately uh, made it pass away through the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Uh, last is, did God ever abolish all of the feast days? He didn't abolish them, he fulfilled them, and then he left the, fulfill, the, the use of Passover and uh, Yom Kippur, well not Yom Kippur, that one was completely abolished, uh, but Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, Hanukkah, things like that, as an ongoing worship expression that believers, especially Jewish believers, could use, not under some law or obligation, but as an expression of joy of God's fulfillment of those things. And so uh, the, the, when we talk about abolishing these days, abolishing to me would imply you should not do it. Uh, that's different than you must do it. There's, there's two different things there, and they're both extremes. One is, you can't do it. If you do it, you're bad. The other is, you must do it. If you don't do it, you're bad. In between those two is the joyful celebration of some believers who say, I'm going to do these feasts or festivals out of a joyful response to what God has fulfilled, and as an act of worship to show his fulfillment of those things. Jesus fulfilled the law perfectly. His death, burial, and resurrection ushered in a new covenant. At his death, the tearing of the temple veil, along with several other New Testament examples, show that the law has both been fulfilled and set aside as an obligation. 
However, the law still has a play in this regard that believers can joyfully celebrate aspects of Old Testament law, like Feast of Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, Hanukkah, things like that, uh, as an expression of joyful celebration of Christ's fulfillment of those things. I hope that answers those four questions. We'll see you guys on Sunday.